Hello again, and now we are repositioned over the top of my work, and you can see the various um, layers that I've already started. I'm just going to finish now, continuing with the horizontal layer um, to get my base in place. So I'm shingling out, that's half done. Need to do a little bit more. Some bits may be a bit thicker, but I'm not trying to make this piece perfect. Just trying to give you a feel of how to do wet felting and to give you the encouragement to get started. Because the only way you learn how to do this is with lots of practice. And the only way to start is just to start. So as long as you've got all the equipment that you need, there's no reason why you can't have a go. It's only your work. It doesn't matter what it looks like as long as you've enjoyed doing it. Right, there we go. I'm just patting that down to get rid of a little bit of the air that's in there because the air is what you will force out with the wool later on so that the various scales on the wool attach to each other. So I'm going to do one more layer of the neutral colour. Let's start off with the ball here. Um, and I'm going to do that vertically. So I did the first vertically, then horizontally, and now a vertical layer. And that will give it its sturdiness that will make it fit together once we wet felt it. So I'll give it, you can use any colour for your background and you could just go straight into the colours that you want. Um, I've just got some spare white here. I'll use up I'm running out of colours slightly. Although as usual most people felting have a rather large stash of wool um, so there's no way I'm going to run out completely. Becomes a little bit addictive when you get used to felting. And you find yourself buying wool and storing it and buying more plastic containers to store it. Right, so that's my three layers of base. And I'm now going to put my picture layer down to try and get my pictures. I'm going to start with my sky and I'll lay that across. I'm not going to have much sky because I only want about a third of the picture sky. Um, because I actually want to be able to see the grass mainly so that I can get lots of different coloured flowers. One thing about white underneath the blue is you don't cover it completely with a blue layer. It won't matter. Because the white will just merge in together with a nice blue white sky that you see on a bright summer's day. There's a few clouds on the sky. Let's get that put across there. As I said, I don't want to go the whole bit. I do want to go out to the sides though because I want to make sure that after it's shrunk, I get a decent size to my picture. So I'd like to be able to frame this and I don't want it to be too short. Often I've made a picture and you find the frame I've got is too big. So let's get a decent amount there. Just flatten that down. A little bit more across the top. If you want to at this stage you could put other colour blues um, or some little um, silky pieces in there um, just to give a, a sort of detail to the sky. I might do that at the end but I want to get my green down first. Now I'm taking a view that the darkest colour should be in the background and the brightest colour should be at the bottom. So I'm going to put the darkest colours of my green across the back in some ways just I'm not trying to do hills or anything fancy today I'm just trying to get some colour as a backdrop to actually putting my flowers on which want to be the star of the piece so if I can get those across there not the best wet felter but all this is is to try and get you used to the technique um, been practicing now for about a year generally in felting um, getting better and better but there's always room for more improvement right there we go that's a nice bit of darker across the back there and then I'm going to get my next color green and this is quite thick so I'm just gonna make it Thin it out slightly to make it easier to pull off the shingles. The word shingles is just something that they use is to put off these 
straps of the wool. Nice and wispy. And then we're going in the same direction. There we go. And a little bit of perhaps colour merging so that there's not a line between the two. So you get a little bit of variegation as you go. And then in my foreground, I'm going to do my much more brightest grass. Because this is where the sun may be shining down a little bit more. And I also want the stems of my flowers to come out against the background. Have you ever seen that um, man who does the joy of painting? And he's got this very even voice on his videos. I'm trying to do that, but I don't want to sound too boring. Hopefully you can hear me and see along. You can always fast forward it if you're finding it a little bit monotonous. Right, there we go. So now I've got a lovely picture um, which shows the blue sky, the dark of the hills at the back, and then the lighter green coming down into the foreground. I'm just going to pause that while I collect some more bits and pieces. Right, I've just collected some bits of sort of silk um, offcuts that I put a bag of sort of old silk offcuts on. So it's silk sort of threads um, of wool. And I'm just going to pull some wispy bits off of there and drop that into the sky to make it just look like there's a few slightly different sort of textures and clouds in there. It's sort of greeny. Um, bluey, purpley colours, but they'll blend in nicely with the blue and they'll shine slightly brighter and that will just give the sky a little bit of a lift. Um, you don't need much of this. Um, and the other thing is sometimes that these little sil silky bits don't necessarily felt very well. They don't hold into the picture. So what I will do after I've done that is take a tiny little bit of the blue wool and take some very thin pieces and layer that just over the top and what that will do is it will act as a, a link to hold them into the picture and you're going to see them through they won't fall off if they don't felt in quite as easily as the rest of the wool careful with your fingers here it's very easy to disturb your picture um, you can always move it around afterwards. Right, and similarly, I've got some green, what we call curly locks. I got these given um, from somebody I bought some silk with and she put a nice gift bag in. And there was some, some lovely little um, curly locks. Um, and the name of the lady was Sheep on Mars. Um, and she did some brilliant silk that I'm using for a scarf practice. And I'm just going to then tease some of these little bits of green out and get them into now they're curly locks they're not silk so they should felt in quite quite easily I don't need to cover them over they'll just give a little bit of um, texture to the grass and I get those in before I put the pictures of my flowers over the top laying out can take a while but it's important to sort of choose what you want get your picture there before you get into the the wetting and the pulling and the rubbing that's going to follow I'm going to split this video into two halves so people if they want can skip the laying out and move to the second section if they prefer I'm not doing this very well pulling it apart but it is working um, they're not the easiest thing, curly locks, to pull apart because they are, by nature, all entwined. Um, there is a, a way, somebody said, I think it's you pull from the end that's not so curly, the, the thicker end. And it's supposed to separate easier. Not really working for me. Can work at the moment. No. What I'm just trying to do is just to get the, the background to be a little bit more exciting than just flat green texture in there. Pop those away. I've also got some um, nice lovely um, purple ones which I'll put in afterwards 
I'll do that after I've actually got my flowers in. And what I want that to do is to make it look like as if there was just some sort of bits of heather, etc., in the background. So we'll, we'll do that. In fact, I may put that on first because otherwise I find it hard to get in behind the flowers. So I'm just going to put some heather on the hills. Tiny little bits. You can do this just with the ordinary merino in that colour that I'm just wanting to give a little bit of curly texture to it. You can see to as I'm pulling it apart here. I'm going to come away just a little bit there to that side of my picture. And then I'll take the slightly lighter colours and put some more on the other side. It's just to look like a bit of heathland behind. Can you really see if this works once you're finished? And if not, let's still make a lovely picture. There we go. That's a bit of background there. Put those away. Right, the next thing is to just make sure again it's as flat as it can be and then I'm going to put the various flowers on top I'm going to, going to have. And I'm going to do some very fine threads, some very fine threads of browns um, just whisked up to give the illusion stalks just give it a bit of dimension slightly lighter colored brown enough of those you can do this with individual wool as well um, I'll show you a bit of that in a minute. Around there just to give a sort of backdrop to the flowers. It's all building up the density and the sort of depth of colour in the picture. Now the picture has moved on somewhat. I realised my iPad was actually full. I needed to clear some storage. So I've just added a few more yarn threads to the bottom there to give it a little bit of texture of the moving up before the flowers come in. Um, some of that is just wool um, and I've just cut that. Um, and laid that down. I put up into the corner there some little trees, look at them as if they're further away into the distance to get some perspective. But mainly this is a simple picture and I just want it to look like there's various um, sort of uh, little flower uh, heads and stalks already ready before I put the colour of my um, flowers on. So I'm just going to reposition this so that you can watch me as I go. And now I'm going to add on the various colours for my flowers. So I've got a lovely peachy colour here. Um, and I'm just going to take little bits of that. And I'm just going to twirl them around to make them into little heads. And they don't have to be particularly at the end of the stalk. They can be wherever you might want them to be. Um, sometimes if you find it hard to do you can give them a little bit of a spray if you've got a spray bottle of water handy which I haven't prepared for myself um, and if they're slightly wet they, they lay down a little bit more I'm not going to do that I'm going to in a minute do the rest of the video on um, time fast okay What I've now got here is some offcuts, some various little projects that I've had before. And what I'm going to do, these are bits that are already felted um, or pre-felted or needle felted, some jewellery ends that I had left over. 
and I'm going to cut some of these to put them as little pieces um, over the work. So I'm going to cut some tiny little bits like this, which is going to give me some tiny little bit of felted of red, give a sense of sort of poppies and other things underneath the, the rest. Got a bit in the wrong place. Uh, but that's giving me an idea. And then I'm going to pop these little bits there. They will hold on to the felt hopefully if some of them fall off when I'm making it it doesn't matter um, and I've got some nice purpley bits this is a pre-felt where you make the felt like we're doing now but only two levels um, two layers you make it very very thin get it to dry and then you can use it to cut out shapes etc um, on um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to give it some little centers uh, and I'll cut those just into a thinner strip and these are some little centres for my flowers, just to give them a kind of wisp of purple in some of those. Just give them another bit of colour. Once this is all wetted, it'll all mould together. Some bits of it will work and some bits won't. Right, and then I've also got some orange. Um, Left over from some purses I made for Christmas presents. I'm going to chop some of that nearer the top. Again, make it look like it's sort of part of the flowers. Centres. And we'll see whether these work afterwards. But experiment. Try different things. What you need is things that are going to felt. So they do need to be wool. Um, and if there's silk or other things like that, then you are going to need to put a little bit over the top to, to make it easy in. Just a few more little bits of red, because I really like this red dappling on the bottom here. Yeah, it looks a bit too big, so I'll put some smaller chips in instead. I think it gives a nice sense across the bottom. I'm thinking about putting a little some spirals of wool, which I'm just going to get. Here I've got some yellows and I'm just going to make those into some little spirals just to put over as if they're different little flowers and with the rest. Now wool is difficult. If you like me have a stash of wool you've lost the labels um, like in that ball you don't really know what it's made of and some of this could be acrylic um, it may not be wool maybe polyester so the result and how well it's going to felt is going to be a little bit hit and miss but we're going to um, see what happens and I'll know for another time whether they're any good Curls, just little circles there. That one's not quite long enough. As it keeps saying, there's no which way right or wrong. It's your picture. Make of it what you will. So I'm going to have some. Sometimes the most unusual things work. And half the fun is just trying things out. So if I've got enough memory in my uh, iPad now for this video, I'll have to clear some of the junk I've got in it. There's millions of songs in there. Probably could clear some, but you never know when you're going to want them. I need a bigger machine. Let me trick myself. Right, there we go. Um, various bits and pieces there. I think for the aim of what this is, is to demonstrate, I think that's quite a lot in the foreground. What I am working out is that I don't really have a lot in the centre here um, and it looks a little bit bare. Now I don't like to put a blob in the middle of the centre of any item 
because I think it looks wrong from the perspective of an artist when you say third, a third, a third. So it's actually going to look wrong. But I need something there. So I think I'm going to put some um, slight um, contours of darker brown to give a feeling of sense of the hills opening up behind. Um, so I'm going to take some of those wisps of the brown colours I used before just to break it up. And then later on with my sewing, I can sew in some of those hills to give them a bit more of a sense of coming down the valley um, and breaking those up a little bit. Um, I don't need much, just to give a sense of if the hill is coming down the curve, and perhaps a slightly darker one going back. And then I think what I will do afterwards, but maybe needle felt them, is I might needle felt a couple of tiny little sheep onto the hills later. Um, I think I'll probably do that with that. So that's just bringing it down into the centre there. Um, so here's the final picture before I do the wetting out, which will be in the second part of this video.